In Ukraine, the war is also fueling a new wave of violence at home. Traumatized men returning from the battlefield or those who can't cope with the economic hardship are taking their frustrations out on their families. DW's correspondent, Aya Ibrahim, reports. Four days ago, Yulia was still living in fear. Now she can have breakfast in peace with her children at this women's shelter near Kiev. I'm bruised all over. I have bruises everywhere. I had one on my head. My blue eye is gone now. He hit me like that. Yulia tells me her partner was always violent to her, but that things got worse when Russians occupied the southern Kherson area where they lived. With factories closing, her partner lost his job and used the little they had to buy alcohol. When she complained she did not have enough to feed her five children, he would batter her. My eldest son is 15 years old. He said, Mom, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for him to kill you or us? I get a lot of support from my son. One time he was beating me in front of my son. My daughter opened the window and shouted to the neighbor, he's killing mom. I probably should have considered whether it was worth living with him earlier. I just didn't know what I would do with my children. Registered cases of domestic violence initially fell at the beginning of the full-scale invasion as millions fled their homes or felt like it was just not the right time to report the abuse. But as people have been returning to their homes or finding new ones, cases have soared this year, according to police data. Irina Shurchno heads a newly formed special unit at the General Prosecutor's Office. It's dedicated to investigating cases of domestic violence. She's convinced the spike in numbers of domestic cases is connected to the war. At the return of prisoners of war from captivity, civilians from captivity, changes communication in the family. Also the difficult financial situation of forced migrants, unemployment. All these are factors that lead to an increase in cases of domestic violence. At the shelter, Yulia is clear that the war made her partner more violent than before. If Russia had not invaded, none of this would have happened. We would be able to support ourselves. Everything would be fine, with work and everything. For the women trying to help Yulia get back on her feet, the war makes no difference. Their focus is on her, not him. The challenge is that these women need to be taught to love themselves. They need to learn to love themselves as they are, to accept themselves as they are. Many women do not love themselves, and because of this, they often stay in such relationships. Yulia is working towards finding a job. She says she's determined she'll never again depend on an abuser to feed her children. Let's speak to Jessica Poyanrel from the Kvinnetil Kvinna Foundation, a women's rights organization called Women to Women in Swedish. She's co-authored a report on gender-based violence in conflict-affected countries, including Ukraine. We really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us on this important issue. Can you tell us what your report found about how the war in Ukraine has affected violence against women? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we at the Kvinna Kvinna Foundation, we support several local women's rights organizations and women's shelters that we've been talking to also when writing this report. And they've all actually seen an increase in domestic violence in this last year. And it's very clear to us that this is connected to the war. And it's not only an increase in violence, but also a brutalization of the violence. So help us better understand uh, what kinds of pressures are at play within a family or a partnership uh, that lead to violence against women at home? Well, I would say that when people are stuck in a conflict situation, they're living under constant fear, which obviously affects their mental health and, and well-being. And in addition to that, they might not be able to go outside, leave their homes or go to work and make a living. And all of this creates an immense pressure within family units and, and leads to an increase in domestic violence.
And in Ukraine, what opportunities are available for them to seek help if they are so brave as to look outside of the household? Well, uh, we should also mention that maybe, you know, the trauma that a lot of the men have gone through being at the front line for, for a long time means that they are all often untreated and have mental health problems. And sometimes also men have more access to, to weapons now and firearms. So there are a lot of things at play now that have made all the violence much worse. Um, the women have a lot of hurdles in when it comes to seeking help. Firstly, it's important to understand that domestic violence is widely seen as a private matter in Ukraine still, which means that a lot of women do not report these crimes or seek outside help. And in addition to that, a lot of women don't want to trouble the police now that the war is going on. We've also met women who have tried to report these crimes, but been told that by police officers that their husbands are war heroes and, and that the police are not interested in arresting war heroes. So the, way, the work of women's shelters who can offer women an escape is absolutely essential. And at the women's shelters that we support, women and their children can come and live in protected spaces. And at these shelters, they can also get help to get medical support, psychosocial support, legal aid and financial support or help to arrange onwards travel so that they can leave the abuser. Yeah. So if there is someone who's, who's watching this interview out there, excuse me for jumping in, if there's someone who's watching who's subject to gender-based violence and also caught in the middle of a conflict zone, what would your advice be to them? What options are available? You should absolutely seek help. There are hotlines and there are women's shelters available. So don't hesitate to seek help. Never minimize what you are experiencing. These are serious crimes and a lot of time they also lead to actually women dying. So never minimize what you're going through and there is help out there. But there are the resources for this are often scarce in conflict affected countries. And in Ukraine, we've seen that at the same time as the increase in domestic violence uh, has, that has gone up, there's also been a decrease in funding. So mm -hmm. it will be important also to have more funding for these services. OK, well, thank you very much for joining us on DW News with that clear call. That is Jessica Boyanvel with Sweden's Kvinnetil Kvinna. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Oh, let's uh, turn to Katarina Cherpaka in Kiev. She heads up a human rights group called La Strada Ukraine, which focuses on gender-based and domestic violence. And also La Strada runs a helpline in Ukraine for the victims. Katarina, how busy is your helpline in these times? Um, yeah, well, the, the hotline is really busy. It works 24-7 and uh, all consultations provided are anonymous and confidential. And of course, it really uh, helps people to feel free uh, to talk about uh, their situation, the cases of domestic violence. For example, for the last year, we had 38,500 uh, calls uh, for from the from our people and then 90 percent of that uh, amount is the cases and the calls regarding domestic violence uh, do all victims of domestic violence in ukraine uh, call a helpline inform the authorities or is there a stigma attached to reporting this uh, of course, unfortunately, not all are able to call and not ready to call or, or report, specifically report to authorities. There are still some stigmas around in the society uh, that really uh, makes um, survivors of domestic violence not to report because they are afraid that they might be judged themselves. They do not consider that they have options uh, and especially in the situation of the full-scale invasion it's really much more complicated to become an independent to find the services to report uh, to start new life and to uh, make yourself safe your and your children's safety in the situation of domestic violence mm. now what about those inflicting the pain perhaps uh, men suffering post-traumatic stress disorder or other psychological concerns from their war experience do they have enough help 
uh, it's still one of the issues that really needs to be addressed uh, more and uh, more comprehensive. This is not something new for Ukraine because the war actually started back to 2014 and already in that uh, years uh, there are cases uh, in the families, the cases of domestic violence in the cases of the former combatants. Now with a, such a scale, with a, such an amount of people who experience and got traumatized during the war as a combatants, of course it becomes more and more serious. There are still needs in making more programs, uh, making more services um, and accessibility of such services, informing about such services for the uh, combatants and uh, for those who like uh, had this, uh, that traumatic experience. And of course, uh, unfortunately, we understand that this is the question of a long-term perspective. A lot of things could be identified or will be identified with mm. a longer perspective and the needs in such services and assistance would remain for a pretty long time. Katarina Cherepaka there with La Strada, Ukraine. Thank you very much for your time.